guess who's back it's your boy t money back at it with another lit lit live reaction man today reacted to the most deadliest rap beefs of all time so we got these iconic rappers and you know with the with, with being a rapper what comes with a uh, rapper competition what comes with competition you know what I'm saying sometimes beef <coughs> Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I thought some of the beasts was fake, you know, calculated. But some of them joints is real. Let's see and let's get into it. Heated. Competition is stiff and greed and jealousy often ruin friendships between people who used to consider themselves. I think who did? Oh, okay. I was like, when they showed uh, Chris Breezy, C Breezy, shout out to VA, who did he beef with? He was beefing with Soldier Boy. Surgeon Boy is the first to ever do everything. I don't even really consider that a real beef, though. Those brothers, from lost followers to death, to fight, the impact of these beefs happen. can be felt for generations Generation. in the industry. It happens at all levels, too. It's not just the guys at the top. Rappers are hungry people, and when other rappers get in the way of their grind, the consequences can be disastrous. <coughs> Today, Sorry, we're going to check out seven of the scariest beefs in the game. Number seven, Drake and Pusha T. Drake is one of the biggest rappers in the world. Yo. Shout out to Push, you know what I'm saying, another VA, you know what I'm saying, representative. Damn, you know what I'm saying, these, hey, these VA artists is just staying in beef, man. Y'all want to smoke with uh, artists from VA, what's up with y'all? You know what I'm saying, shout out to Drake. Just dropped an uh, album for the dogs, you know what I'm saying. I, have, I fuck with three of the songs other, other than that mid, that's just my opinion. Don't come for me, Drake, Drizzy. Right now. Six, six, six. And that's a place he's occupied for a long time. Like him or not, the dude has some serious staying power. On the other hand, while Pusha T gets respect, he's not quite on the same level of fame. Now, kind of the reverse is the case when we look at street cred. Drake doesn't really bang, and he doesn't act like he does. On the other hand, Pusha T. But he do be trying to drop bars, and he, I think, you know what I'm saying? Some would say, you know, Drake, Drizzy from the six, be trying, like, you know what I mean? be sneak dissing a lot and acting like he going harder than you know what I'm saying than that than audrey from um degrassi you feel me <laughs> t raps about the streets all the time while it might just be a character no one calls him out for it meanwhile people make fun of drake all the time for getting his start as an actor on degrassi aside from all that oh. it seems like drake and wheezy screwed push a t out of some money when they got a clips feature way back in the day Damn. things just got worse from there maybe the worst of the whole beef is that push a t announced to the whole world that drake had a son he had been keeping a secret as a result drake's been a lot more vocal about his son hey. uh with that being said yeah um push it did expose drake on that you know what i mean you know what I'm saying? By having a son that he hit for the world. But in Drake's words, you know what I'm saying? It's not that he had a son that he hit for the world. He had a, uh, he's trying to hide the world from his son. Or is it vice versa? Some shit like that. <laughs> but he had it with a, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, a porn star, you know what I mean? So it's understandable. He tried to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Had a, you know what I'm saying? 304, you know what I'm saying, as a baby mama's. <laughs> you feel me? Instead of keeping him hidden away. Honestly, maybe it's a good thing that Push did that. At the end of the day, it made Drake a better father. That being said, things could have gotten a whole lot worse from here. It's just good that they didn't. In terms of collateral damage, the worst thing this beef did was the beef between Kanye and Drake that went on for years. But it really doesn't go much further than that. There have been threats and things like that, but no one's made any serious moves aside from a crazed fan or two. Number six, 50 Cent. And funny thing about that, man, he got a song where I feel like he's still in a shot at a VA. And I fuck with the song, even though, you know what I'm saying? Me being for VI, I do fuck with the song, but he he definitely, I feel like he kind of th threw shots at VA, you know what I'm saying, off of Pusha's beef, but you know how he is. Drake likes to, you know what I'm saying, use the songs that on his albums towards the females that he's fucking with at the time, you know, and then him and, um, who else, him and uh, somebody else was beefing, uh, going back at it. 
you know what I'm saying Joe Buttons, him and Joe Buttons were going back at it, you know what I'm saying, on some Twitter shit, you know what I mean, but at the end of the day, you know how Joe Buttons is, you know, he's an older uh, artist, and he's gonna speak his mind, you know what I mean, and Drake is damn near an older artist, and still trying to paint his nails and chill with Yachty, <laughs> was, was his beef, I guess, I don't know. And Ja Rule. The beef between 50 Cent and Ja Rule is one of the best known beef in the industry. It's murder! Hey yo, and then 50 called him a wankster, for real. Everyone and their moms have heard about this one, but a lot of people don't know just how serious it's gotten. Even to this day, we still don't know exactly what happened that night at the club, but afterward, 50 Cent and Ja Rule would eternally be bitter enemies. The whole claim is that 50, or one of his friends, robbed Ja Rule of some jewelry. Ja Rule said it was because 50 didn't like seeing him get love from his fans. At the hit factory, Ja Rule and 50 got into it, and 50 ended up going home with stitches. The IRS also released documents about Murder, Inc., Ja Rule's crew. Mm. I seen something about that, uh, you know, saying, you know, the the uh, beef DVDs and stuff back in the day. I think of somebody from Murder Inc. It was the black black dude, black ass dude. I forgot his name, but he said he hit the lights and got the slicing and dicing out there. Man, I thought the fool was Jason for real. He said it's murder. Hit the lights and. <laughs> You know what I mean? But 50 ain't no slouch, though. You know, 50 got them hands. He used to box, you know what I'm saying? And they said that he been punished a couple people. A lot of people in the industry, when 50 Cent G-Unit was out there, done, done, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, he single-handedly ended the Murder, Inc.'s whole motherfucking career, dog. You don't, you, you get, don't see nothing coming out of Murder, Inc. no more, for real, for real. And their connections to a drug lord in Queens. Apparently, there was a big hit out on 50 for rapping about things the public wasn't meant to know. 50 Cent ended up getting shot at in 2000, and he survived. Everything was dormant for a while, but back in 2018, Ja Rule called 50 out on Twitter. To retaliate, 50 decided the best course of action was to buy out all the first four Yo, rows of savage. seats at one King of Ja Rule's shows, meaning he had to play to tons of empty seats. Damn, and he sat there, yeah. Ha 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 ha. Hey, 50, yo, is a savage for that one. Just imagine that, yo. Madden, you an artist, and he, this man, somebody you beefing with, buy up your whole couple front rows of seats. And then was sitting, like, look, he was sitting in that joint. Hold up. Hold up. See how you sitting in there? All the first four rows of look. seats at one of job Wait. shows, meaning he had to play to Tom. Look at, look at this dude, bruh. Empty seat all the way in the back. The back seat there was still. And it looked like, I mean, sorry, it's all, you know what I'm saying, look like all Caucasians in the back, yo. I don't think I see one, I don't see, think I see one black dude back there at 50 in the, in the seat, you know what I'm saying, just cheesing and grinning. That is King Petty right there, dog. <laughs> of empty seats pretty Damn. savage honestly while there's a history of some pretty aggressive stuff here it's likely that the beef is pretty much dormant for now number five six nine and basically everyone now you six already nine. know we can't King talk Trump. beef without mentioning Snitch six nine. nine the dude King has been Trump. in everyone's business and the thing is we can't say it isn't a valid strategy as awful as it is it makes sense if you're gonna go down for snitching what else do you have left than to just become the most hated man in the industry so pretty we ended much. up lashing out off. pretty much anyone who's anyone from Trippy Red to Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. The worst of the beef, though, was probably the one he decided to start up with Chicago drill rapper Chief Keef. The whole thing started because of drama surrounding the rapper Cuban Doll. Apparently, she had a relationship with some people from Chief Keef's crew, and they weren't very good to her. 6 9 was on good terms with her, so the two of them got together to taunt GBE and Glow Gang. Eventually, they ended up taking a trip to Hawaii together and cruising around an O-Block just to stir things up. To make matters worse, after all this went down, 6 9 ended up linking up with Chief Keef's ex, who was the mother of his first son. He took her down to the Gucci store, captured it all on video. He spends the whole length of the footage basically just trying to rile Chief Keef up. <laughs> King Troll, King Snitch, King Rat. And I think he just got it, uh, locked up again, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I might have to do a reaction about that uh chat leave uh in the chat if you want me to do a reaction on six lines snitch nine uh recently getting locked up i think it's um in dr you know what i'm saying they said he trying to start up the spanish treyway after he does snitched on the real treyway 
is what's crazy to me. But you know what I'm saying? Since I did beef with the whole industry, shoot, back in what? 2019. You know what I mean? He was under there beefing with everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, done be so beefed with everybody. Name name a uh, rapper he ain't troll. Uh, ain't troll. You know what I mean? And you can't really beef with 69 because you get to beef with him and something does uh, get active. You know, you already know you, he's going to snitch on you. He's working with them peoples. You know what I mean? He's working with them peoples. You know what I'm saying? He's basically got a badge, you know what I'm saying, under his rainbow colored hair. You know what I mean? Pretty much. Yeah, no. yeah I like you to keep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really came of this whole thing, probably just because 6ix9ine is probably one of the most heavily guarded dudes in the world right now. Right. A lot of people aren't too happy with him. Number four, NWA and Ice Cube. This is maybe Ooh, one of the most legendary right beefs in all hip hop. See, NWA and Ice Cube didn't really see eye to eye all the time. Eventually, things got really bad between the whole group. While Ice Cube took shots at everyone, it seems like he had the biggest issues with Eazy E and Dr. Dre. The issue started because, according to Ice Cube, their manager and Eazy E, who founded Ruthless, were underpaying him. Easy e and Jerry Heller haven't ever really spoken on the whole thing, but before they knew it, Ice Cube left NWA and went solo. Meanwhile, the rest of NWA were still more or less one unit, working together. Dre and Snoop Dogg started collaborating on a few tracks. There were lyrics directed right at Ice Cube, calling him out for ditching the group and whining about pay. Eventually, Ice Cube decided that he had enough and released No Vaseline. The track is over five minutes long, mm. and in each verse, he goes in on a different member of NWA, even yeah, deciding to drag their manager into the diss. The whole situation Did never go really got that. violent, I mean, but the issue that is that right a lot there, of the dudes in the crowd at the time- That was a legendary time, beef right there, you know what I mean? I do remember, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no Vaseline. Uh, that was a little bit before my era and stuff, but at the same time, I do remember that was an iconic beef, and it was crazy because it was, you know, at a time when the NWA was going crazy. Um, you know, he left the group, you know, because uh, the money ain't as right. And then a lot of time, it's funny, when the money is funny, motherfuckers get the beefing. I'm going to say that again. If the money is funny, motherfuckers going to get the beefing. You know what I mean? And it, it always seems like that's how it starts off. Or if they really just don't like each other. Like in the case of 50 and Jairo, I think they just really didn't like each other. But other, other, all the other beasts, I feel like it was over like publicity or money being funny for real were actually about gang life. Dre wasn't ever really into it, but Easy e was a whole different story. Number three, Dirk versus Rondo. Lil Dirk and Rondo's beef runs deep, and it has the potential to be one of the deadliest beefs on the list. Yeah. The issue all stems from the fact that Dirk's close homie found himself in a pretty rough situation. See, Quando Rondo and King Von used to chill way back in the day. Mm. There are even videos of the two of them together. Eventually, something soured along the way, taking place entirely behind the scenes. A few years later, back in 2020, Vaughn was down in Atlanta, where Quando lives, doing a show. After the show, for some kind of after party, they all went down to Monaco Hookah Lounge. Eventually, Vaughn slipped off and found Quando Rondo sitting in his car, sleeping. He started a fight and tried to throw hands with Quando when Lil Tim stepped out. Lil Tim was sticking up for his homie and ended up shooting King Vaughn, although he also sustained a wound. Pretty much ever since, Quando and Tim have been on a mass disrespect pretty much constantly talking about how it was self-defense and that Vaughn and it's this is this was one of probably you know saying besides maybe the you know um Biggie and um you know saying Pac beef you know what I mean it's probably like the new age one of the bigger beefs and stuff we actually did and uh, Delhi, you know what I'm saying, with the loss of, uh, you know, King Vaughn, you know what I'm saying, R.I.P. King Vaughn, but it's not like, you know, a, you know, we ain't nobody here being the judge, you know, we're just reacting to the videos we see, you know, but on this platform, we're not going to say we condone any of that type of violence. Let's carry on. I shouldn't have pulled up on him like that. Dirk's not really having any of that. And while he hasn't made any big statements, a lot of people think that Dirk has plans for Quando and Tim. Number two, O Block and Young Boy. And this might be one of the most upsetting Another beefs one. in recent memory. Young Boy got but into almost, a That's little. almost like the same beef, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, <coughs> Dirk, O Block, uh, <coughs> all the, you know, Chirac. You know what I mean? Demons, you know what I'm saying? King Von 
and um, them are all associated, affiliated together, you know, obviously. <clears throat> and then you got Quando Rondo and Young Boy and all them, all their affiliations. You know what I mean? They all kind of affiliated together. You know what I mean? So with that, uh, with that whole beef, you know, people was like, you know, they were trolling Dirk, saying when you gonna spin for Vaughn, you know, and then. You know, uh, one of what Dirk's, uh, no, one of Quando Random, um, Quando Rondo man's got hit out Cali, and allegedly, you know, saying it was, uh, it was set up. You know what I mean? It was a set up hit, allegedly. You know, leave her like that. Dirk over some comments he made about Quando Rondo, since Quando was on Young Boy's label, and the two of them are pretty close. That's when Young Boy released Bring the Hook, just ahead of the release of his mixtape Colors. On the track, NBA Young Boy basically says that he's coming for blood, calling out the entirety of Oblock. He also makes more specific references to Lil Dirk. A lot of people think it might just be a little bit of internet beef for clout, but that might not be the case. See, Young Boy's on house arrest right now, but he's also out on bail for a list of charges that could end up landing him a life long prison sentence. If NBA Youngboy really wanted to do something, he could. It just depends on how much he really feels like turning this into something and how much he's just beefing for streams on colors. People went crazy for Bring the Hook and definitely felt the heat Youngboy was bringing. One fan said he's going against the whole industry at this point and I'm here for it. That being said, Oblock wasn't feeling it one bit. A big group of people from Oblock posted a video of themselves stomping on 4KT green bandanas. Number one, Tupac and Biggie. Biggie and Pac were the two biggest names in the game for a lot of the 90s. Along with that came up. And um, if you haven't seen, um, they have uh, solved the murder for, you know what I'm saying, uh, Pac. You know what I'm saying? And they got the Keefe D going on. Vlad interview snitching, solving the case. You know what I'm saying? So um, basically Vlad the police. So I don't know. I understand how all these, um, you know what I'm saying, artists like you know, boozy and all these people keep going on Vlad. Y'all keep going on Vlad. Y'all gonna keep getting your ass popped, or y'all gonna y'all gonna be indicted. Y'all gonna be in some type of you know some type of uh beef. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with the feds. You know what I mean? With the feds. With the what 98 conviction rate? Nah, I'm good off that whole dat. A bitter rivalry that can still be felt in hip hop today. This just might be the most tragic beef so far. Tupac didn't really come from the streets. He kind of adopted that life later on, but that doesn't mean he was any less real. Tupac and Suge Knight were at a Mike Tyson match in 1996 when they spotted a member of the Southside Crips in the lobby. Those were the ops for Tupac. He and Suge roughed him up a little bit when they saw him. Unfortunately, that would lead to a drive-by that claimed Tupac's life later that night. Now, as far as Biggie goes, no one really knows who was actually behind the reason of this death. A lot of people at the time thought that he was directly related to Tupac's death, since the two of them had ended up in scuffle. A lot of people is uh, pointing fingers at Diddy, though. Allegedly setting up this Pac hit, um, and allegedly might have something to do with, you know, Biggie's his own man, his own artist can hit, man. So, you know, this is all allegation, you know, so I said allegedly. So, dude, we're going to leave it there. You know what I mean? But Kiwi D did say if he going down, he taking, you know what I'm saying, P. Diddy with him. Puff Daddy, Sean Puffy Cones. See, they said he, hey, he said he ain't going to be the only one on the block, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> once or twice. According to most people these days, Biggie had an alibi. Six months later, Biggie was shot in a similar drive-by. A lot of people follow the theory that Suge Knight organized the whole thing as revenge for Tupac, but no one could be sure. If that's the case, it's so much more sad, because it's likely that Biggie had nothing to do with it. What do y'all think about these? Did we miss any beefs that you think? Man, there you have it, yo. Your boy T-Money with another lit lit live reaction, man. New, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the bell and um, subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified on all uh, videos going to be dropped. Um, also, you know, leave in the comments um, if there was any rap beefs that uh, I missed. And, you know, if you want me to do a video on that, let me know as well, man. But there you have it. It's your boy T-Money makes buttons with another lit, lit, lit live reaction you dig and i'm out